Alright guys, I wanted to share with you something I discovered uh, recently with Photoshop and After Effects. I have these flat surface layers of these planets here. Um, Earth, Mars, Venus, and we're going to open these all with Photoshop. And then in Photoshop, we are going to take these layers and come up to 3D, 3D shape from layer and select sphere. Now watch what happens here. This creates a 3D layer now that we can manipulate, spin around, and it acts like legitimate 3D. All right, so let's save that as a Photoshop file. Let's just uh, save this as a PSD. Okay. And let's do the same with each of these. So we'll take Mars and create a sphere out of that. All right, there's Mars. And we will save that as a PSD. Okay, and we will do the same with the surface of Venus. 3D sphere. Great. Okay, and save that as a PSD as well. Now we're going to take these 3D images we created. I separated these two folders into 2D and 3D images. We're going to take the PSDs and open these with After Effects. And we're going to want Live Photoshop 3D, Editable Layers, OK. And it's going to ask us this for each of these. And now you can see we have these layers, these comps, which are... 3D in here. And let's rotate these all along the Z. So we're going to set keyframes at the beginning of the end and then just rotate these along the Z axis so it appears as if the planet itself is rotating. Okay, so we did that for the Earth. Let's do it for Mars. Again, on the Z axis. And we will rotate it over time. And again, with Venus. Rotate. Okay, now let's make a new comp, and we'll do full 1080 at 24, and then we'll bring each one of these planets into our new composition. So we have, let's put these in order of uh, from the sun. So we have Venus, Earth, Mars. Okay, let's make sure these are all 3D layers, and let's hit the position on these, and let's separate these out into Z space. So we have Venus, this is going to be the furthest away, Mars will be the closest to the camera, and let's bring that over to the right a little bit and then Earth will be in the middle. And maybe push Venus even back further by holding shift and sliding along the axis. All right, so now let's create a new light. And this is just going to kind of fill in our scene. It's just gonna be an ambient light, make it kind of a cool bluish white and just put it at 100% so there's not any weird shadows or anything on these 3D layers that are our planets. Now let's create a new solid. This is gonna be the sun, hit okay. And we're going to come into optical flares and we're going to change this to 3d make it on transparent go up into your options and there's this sunspot one that i like here that i'm going to use select that hit ok and let's take this and push this way back on the z position and let's throw this at the bottom and then let's position this so it's kind of right in the center of our frame here you can either do that manually or just select the uh crosshairs here and pick the middle or wherever you want it to be and I'm going to adjust my uh, center position of my flare too as well and then another thing I'm going to do is create some stars here so a new solid stars we're going to use a particular preset here in our HD presets and there is this star field let's see static yeah right here the first one all right and now we're going to go over where the particles start. Let's slide this back a little bit so they begin when our comp begins. And then stretch this out. Okay. So now we're going to change this to a box emitter. And we're going to separate these stars by holding shift and dragging this number way up. And we, Because this is outer space. This is going to be huge. These are really spaced out now. So we can go as far or as crazy as we want with these. Um, depending on how many stars you want to stay within your scene. And then we're going to change the velocity on all these down to zero because we don't want our stars jumping around or falling. We're going to set a keyframe on the particles a second. One frame before the comp, we'll set it at 5,000. And then when the comp starts, we'll set it at zero. And then we're going to change the particle life just up to 20 so these aren't dying on us as our 
comp is playing out. Change it to kind of a bluish white again for the stars, and then I'm going to add a glow as well so that they just look a little bit brighter. Okay. Then I'm going to create a new camera, 35 millimeters, okay, and create a new null so I can control my camera, set my null to 3D, and pick whip the camera to my null and change this to move. And this is what we're going to move now. This will control the camera throughout the scene. Let's set a keyframe at zero and zoom way in here on the z-axis. And then we'll set a keyframe at the end and pull way back on the z. And I'm going to add a motion blur to all of my planets here. So as the camera pulls back, it will add a motion blur. Make sure the motion blur is turned on for the comp as well. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and kind of cool off the entire scene. Maybe add a little contrast here and um, maybe strip the reds out a little bit and put some blue in there just to kind of make it look a little bit cooler. Next, I'm going to add this Enhance Cool Effect Film Magic Pro preset and uh, then bring the opacity down on this adjustment layer. And then I'm going to select all my planets and add an edge blur so the edges aren't so sharp. Another thing we can do is turn the depth of field on for our camera so it can have a specific focal plane as it pulls back through the entire scene. If you come in here and adjust these settings, you'll kind of get a feel for what these different settings do with the focus distance, the aperture, and the blur level. Set this at about 1200, bring up my blur level, and uh, this is what I ended up with. It may not be the best looking scene, but um, the overall purpose of the tutorial is how Photoshop 3D integrates with After Effects. So um, I hope you learned something, have fun, and go play. I'll see you next time.